Be Humble, Be Powerful, a podcast series by me, Francesca Frank, about humility and leadership. This episode looks at if managers themselves actually benefit from their own humility. Last but not least, as a manager, you will also ask yourself, does humility have positive effects for me on a mental level, a physical level or within the company? For a manager who is already humble, this is probably a rather absurd question. C.S. Lewis, the great English writer, formulates beautifully what is probably present in humble people. He writes only of men, but we know not to take this seriously. His quote, Do not imagine that if you meet a really humble man, he will be what most people call humble nowadays. He will not be a sort of greasy, smarmy person who is always telling you that of course he is a nobody. Probably all you will think about him is that he seems a cheerful, intelligent chap who took a real interest in what you said to him. If you do dislike him, it will be because you feel a little envious of anyone who seems to enjoy life so easily. He will not be thinking about humility. He will not be thinking about himself at all. This is already one of the core benefits. Humble managers tend to feel good about themselves because they appreciate all that they have around, are willing to learn, find life exciting and enjoy being surrounded by interesting people. One interviewee also told me sprightly, I think I can really learn something from everyone. And in the interview, she was actually one of the very few who asked me questions about myself. Still, it may be important to know that there are also measurable effects of cultivating humility in oneself as a manager. Research has identified six so far, and I will describe two of these in more detail in this and the next podcast. The first has to do with leadership potential. It goes back to something you tend to read so often and which I spoke about in the first podcast. We get the impression that only narcissists or egocentrics get promoted, but never the humble. Is that really true? While research has not yet reached the point where it has looked at dozens of companies over several years and measured by behavior who gets promoted or not, studies have already looked into who is seen with more leadership potential, the humble or the unhumble. Some of the relevant studies come from the American military, where many would not expect humility at first. What a good time to take a humbling break and be willing to learn to look beyond prejudices. In fact, the leadership manual that every US officer has to review includes core elements of humility. I quote, As a critical element of adaptability, self-awareness enables leaders to recognize their strengths and weaknesses across a range of conditions and progressively employ strengths to correct weaknesses. Secondly, it quotes, to be self-aware, leaders must be able to formulate accurate self-perception, gather feedback from others, and change their self-concept as appropriate. Thirdly, self-aware leaders are open to feedback from others and actively seek it. How come that the military seems to be much more advanced here than most companies? If you're interested in this topic, you should take a look at the book by Stephen Bungie, The Art of Action. In it, he gives a fascinating description of how General Helmut von Moltke reformed the Prussian army, switching it from obedience and orders to mission control. What distinguishes mission control? That it lets go of orders, but gives missions. That soldiers are not expected to obey blindly, but to use their own cleverness. That every soldier is told what will happen if he does not fulfill his mission. That he gets the bigger picture. That every soldier should learn and listen and hear, and only then will he be able to truly use the freedom to act as he sees fit within set parameters. In his book, Bungie naturally shifts this powerful military mindset and structure of mission control to everyday corporate life. Not a hard thing to do, since many managers have always been big fans of von Moltke. You just need to look at Jack Welch, who adopted as much as he could from the man who was nicknamed the Great Silent One. He was, quote, the officer of the Prussian army who knows how to keep silent in seven languages. He was unpretentious, humble, and his tactics were spectacularly successful. Unfortunately, copying the same tactics, the German army also was hugely successful at the beginning of the Second World War. Back to what we are looking for in this podcast. We are trying to understand whether a humble manager is considered to have more or less leadership potential. The setup. 
180 high-ranking US officers were asked to rate two candidates on their potential. They were given the following story. The situation is as follows. An officer, a lieutenant, a low-ranking officer, is in a military training exercise. The exercise is time critical and the young officer is making a bundle of mistakes. Some of these mistakes are inevitable due to the situation. Others could have been avoided. Among his people is an angry subordinate called Jones, who repeatedly points out the mistakes and possible solutions. To be honest, he's not actually pointing them out, but rather cursing at the young officer. This person has the necessary knowledge and experience to help the young officer succeed and save the exercise. Now you see two different versions for a response. Officer number one says, Sergeant Jones, there was nothing wrong with my plan. Anyone else would have made exactly the same decision as I did. I don't want your advice on how to command my platoon. Bring your soldiers here, let them bring the equipment or tools they need to repair and do it now. I don't want to hear from you again until the problem is solved. Officer number two says, Sergeant Jones, you're right. I am responsible and I made a bad decision. You have more experience in situations like this and I should have listened to you. Now I have the commander breathing down my neck and you are the only one who can get us all out of this mess. I am at a loss at this point. What do you think we need to do to solve the problem? What can I do to help you and your soldiers to get it done? When I describe the situation to participants, a stereotypical reflex comes up and most say that of course they would rather have officer two, but surely in the American military the first one would be promoted. And of course they're hugely wrong about this. Very clearly, the 180 officers who read this fact also saw Officer 2 as considerably more capable and would have promoted that one in any case. Of course, you can say this is just an isolated situation. However, I also ran a study on this subject. Here, individual candidates for a leadership position are described. One is more narcissistic, the other humbler. The clear result, the humble manager, regardless of whether male or female, is by far preferred on all levels of the company. Do those positive pieces of news respond with reality? Sometimes it may take some extra effort. One CEO told me that in an interview for his new position, he was criticized for portraying successes too much as if his team had made everything happen. He was being pushed to say where he as an individual had been decisive. But once he strongly affirmed how little he could accomplish without his team and that it would never be his interest to be seen as an egocentrical leader who believes he can shift a company on his own, the interviewer was satisfied and the CEO got the job. This fits the evidence that headhunters report that they are specifically asked to pay attention to the issue of humility. In 70% of the board seats, they say this was a requirement of the companies. And the CEO of a Swiss company with more than 1,000 employees told me that six months after he started, the headhunter told him that he had been hired because of his humility. So a clear value proposition to you. In order to be seen as a potential CEO, it is best to become humble.